Thanks for joining us on America Tonight. I'm Joey Chen. Tonight we look behind the walls of communities facing America's toughest challenges. So often housing projects are written off, considered too hopelessly riddled with poverty and crime to even begin to think about a future. Tragically, the residents of public housing are written off along with their homes and their stories of trying to reshape their opportunities, make their lives better, are left untold. America Tonight's Nicole Grether found sometimes it takes someone from the inside to give voice to the voiceless. All right, quiet on the set. Quiet on the this set. This is Project Heat. It's a drama series about life living in the projects. Action. Hey, yo, Tone, man. Yo, it's crazy out here, yo. What's up? Yo, police been chasing me down, man. And I had to run and flush all the work down the toilet, oh, man. Oh, wow. And now, hold up, man. I don't know what to do, yo. Please tell me something, man. Cut, cut, cut. But when the cameras stop rolling, <laughs> life in the projects keeps going for the cast and crew. The actors also live where they work. Now, that's how you open a building. It's called Lewis H. Pink Houses. One of the most dangerous housing projects in New York City. And it's the set of Project Heat. Ready? Creator of the series is Tiffan Dunn, known as Pop. You know your lines? He's also the star of the show. I'm trying to get a connect. Now, please tell me that you got a line with somebody that could front me some white right now, man. I'm in desperate need, dog. The show is based on Pop's life growing up in the projects in the late 80s and the early 90s. Hit me when you drop that off, all right? All right, cool. All right, go. That was perfect. What have you been through? Oh, man. I've been shot once in my face. Got shot in my neck, you know. Growing up in pink houses, you know, you get you get trapped off. There's a lot, a lot of negativity going on around you. And if you ain't strong-minded, if you don't even focus on what you got and you want to achieve, you're going to get caught up. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going to get caught up in the, in the mix. And then it's like it's no way out. Pop takes us around pink houses alongside co-creator Doug Aparicio, also known as KD. It's like a very popular dude that nobody knows, that needs to be known. KD is the man responsible for taking Pop's life from the streets to the screen. I mean, anybody could be in the streets running around with a gun shooting and all that, but it's the direction that he chose and, how, and where he ended up. The show debuted in May of last year. It's now in season two on YouTube. Down there in Brooklyn, the pink houses, my money messed up, my money not looking right. Each episode features a different story and no subject goes untouched. From drug deals, even gun violence. If it happens in pink houses, it happens on Project Heat. I want you to sound like it's urgent. urgent Except I'm, I'm on the set, there are a few starts. Action. Yeah. Quiet. And then stops. She gave me her income tax just to get, you know, ah. Get it. I'm going to nail it right now. I'm going to nail it right now for you, Katie. And shared laughs about otherwise serious subjects. Asking him for the plug or tone? You ask everybody for a plug. When you down, you ask everybody, you know? <laughs> what is it like when you're filming? I feel natural because it's like stuff that we go through, you know? And it's just depicting it to the world for them to see. So it's, it's, it's a great feeling every time we record. Season one, episode one, depicted the shooting of 28-year-old Akai Gurley. Let's just go down the stairs. Shot inside pink houses by a rookie NYPD officer. Pop, KD, and the crew take us inside the stairwell where it all happened. When he opened the door, he came in. Make a shave right back, and then they just continue running. On the way out. Uh oh. We get stuck inside the elevator. Help him push it. Oh, there he is. There he is. There go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> and end up taking those same stairs. Not unusual. Project problems, as they call them. Feel it yourself. The cast uses fake guns <laughs> and fake rap sheets, but their meaning is real. What kind of message do you want to send out to your viewers? It's really, a, in the end of the day, it's really about changing things, you know, 
We need justice, and the only way we're going to get justice is by coming together. I want to send a positive message to everybody that views Project Heat that, you know, don't just look at the drama and the negativity, but learn from the drama and the negativity and see what you really want to become in this life. Doesn't have to consist of those things, you know? Back on the set, like, you know, Pop tells us he has eight siblings, six sisters and two brothers. His mother was a single parent inside pink houses. What happened to your mom? My mom, she, she actually passed away when I was incarcerated back in 1997, in September. And that was the most hurtingest thing that ever happened to me because I, I really blanked out. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Was that your turning point? Yeah, of course. So she really put me on my P's and Q's, like what direction you want to go in life. Her episode of Project Heat is still being written. What would that episode be like? It's going to be a touchy feeling. Like mm -hmm. it's a touchy situation with that one because she actually died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And um, she definitely was my backbone. And she definitely made me turn my life around. Do you know Akai? It's our last day with the Project Heat crew. They're taping the verdict in the Akai Gurley shooting. What do you think? They, they need someone to play number. the part of a news reporter. Yo, get that mic out my face. I fit the description. We need justice for Akai Gurley. It's episode 14 in just over a year on YouTube for Project Heat. What's the verdict? Proof. Cop is guilty. Of how far they've come and how far they hope to take their message. Nicole Grether, Al Jazeera, New York. Speaking to the voices of the community. Next, we consider the cries for help and why victims of domestic violence find themselves stifled by the fear of losing their homes.